Hey, come on, Jesus freaking gamer here, coming at you with Ezra. I lied. Nehemiah, chapter four. It's a sin to lie. God forgive me. Nehemiah, the book after Ezra, chapter four. There are some guys who have served God under some extreme conditions before, and such a story is here in this chapter. Just to give you a few verses from it, go down to verse sixteen. There, Nehemiah and Ezra, and a bunch of the Jews that had been released from the captivity, they were going back and they were trying to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem, and they weren't having the easiest time. Let me see, I was like, actually, before I read that verse, back up to verse 11. And our adversaries said they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Did they have the king's permission to go and rebuild the um? To rebuild Jerusalem? Yes, they did. They had the king's permission. So these guys, they weren't exactly following the king's orders or having the king's orders in their heart. So while they may have been punished if they had succeeded in destroying the Jews, they did not succeed in that, nor keeping the wall from being built. It, the king's commandment may have punished them after killing the Jews. It would not have left the Jews alive or the wall built. So they were... Needless to say, they were a bit scared, and they had to prepare for it accordingly. Now back down to verse 16. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction, and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, The work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So there's faith involved. They're ready to, they're, they're believing that God will help them to do this work, and that this work is of Him at the same time. They're being very practically minded. They're getting ready to fight. They're getting ready to do their part in the battle. They're getting ready to wield their sword in the middle of building this wall. And to further press the point, jumping down to verse 23, So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for washing. So they didn't even bother changing clothes. They were, they were building, guarding, or sleeping um, in, in between meals and bathing. And they had to build the wall of Jerusalem under that kind of pressure. To me, that is an amazing faith and an amazing resolve. And that, that's a good goal to strive for. Not that I want to be surrounded by my enemies on all sides. Not that I want my life to be in danger or that of my family. I don't want that. But to be able to demonstrate a faith that God will take care of me in the darkest of scenarios... That is a faith that I do want. Don't know what I'll have to do to get to it. Then again, this life is quite the adventure, especially can be with God on your side. He will send you to places to stretch you and to grow you and to strengthen you. So it's a bit scary, but at the same time, I look forward to whatever it is that God has in store for me as a person. And I will encourage you, you know, gird up your loins, have your sword at your side, be ready to fight if the Lord so calls you, be ready to fight if the enemy so if the enemy so threatens you. And don't give in, don't yield, don't back down. Believe that the Lord will be there with you and that he will fight the battle with you. And do what you need to do to fulfill his will for your life. And be excited that even in the middle of danger, your God is with you. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forsaken you. So take that step of faith. Go forward, even if you're a bit scared. And just arm yourself to the best of your extent. Be ready to the best of your extent. And let God do his part because he does love you. You can trust you. He, he, I'm sorry, you can trust him. And he will protect you. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hopefully this was encouraging and not scary. Sometimes there's some dark and scary stuff in this world. We just have to believe that God is greater than it all. As cliche as that sounds, it is true. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.